doctor, yeah. when you said it's the jab, I know it's the jab. Did the doctor lean in and show compassion and ask you questions at the North Shore Hospital? What sort of reaction did they you get? They would look at me funny, they treated me like it, like I was, they, they basically belittled me. In what? Made, they try to make me feel like I didn't know things. So they would use their knowledge over mine. So it was every time as well. Like I, because I wasn't a doctor, I didn't know or understand myself. So if you said, I know it's the jab, they'd go, no, it can't possibly be. That sort of thing. Yeah. So you are then being traumatized twice. You've got, you've got your physical trauma and you've got them denying that you understand what you're going through. And thirdly, making you feel small. Yeah. And I never understood it. How did you cope with that? Did you keep saying, this is my truth? This is my truth? Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, I've had to have... <laughs> While I was in the hospital, I was not in the right mind either. I was having, like, comprehension issues. Ah. I was having vocal tics that, you know, come on and off mm. in waves. I literally was finding it difficult to communicate to them the whole time. And instead of a short interview and compassion for you, what, you were being subjected to interview after interview, were you? Yeah. It was like I tried to explain to them, like, I'm struggling to understand. They wouldn't listen. They said, oh, you can talk, you're fine. I was like, I need someone, you know, to help me. I need someone to be there who, like, my partner to be there for me to be able to tell you what's going on cause I'm, or to be my ear. It wasn't, I believe, apologize, my, my memory is bad. Um, the fourth or the fifth, the fifth time, uh, there was a doctor who um, I talked to and I said, and I was by myself that time as well, and I said, I've been feeling very dismissed and I was struggling at the time to talk and trying to explain myself properly with words. And I said, I've been feeling very dismissed by doctors. And he said, no, that's not what they've been trying to do. And then he tried to explain, oh, he tried to explain himself and his colleagues away. And I'm like, that's not my experience. And then he, I asked if I could have a call, which the nurses said I was allowed to. They said I was allowed to do this. I said, can I call my partner right now so he can be an ear for me? He denied me twice. So you were not, you were put oh, through wow. all of this. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. You were put through all of this on your own. Oh. So when they came out to get you, they wouldn't let Stefan, your partner, go with you? No. And this they, is, not even a phone call. This is absolutely unheard of. Yeah. I was confused. I was like, what's going on? Why are you treating me like this? I couldn't, like, like I couldn't comprehend around that time. But it wasn't until after... I really thought about it or like try to remember. I was like, Casey, it's oh. absolutely shocking. Even somebody who's oh, been what? arrested for a crime is allowed a call. And you are needing help. So was there any compassion at all no. that you came across in North Shore Hospital? Only from the nurses and orderlies. But they, they're not the ones that are doing the assessments, are they? Not really. It's the doctors who should be the ones that are listening. This is utterly shameful. Would you be willing, we're going to start keeping records of defalcations of, of, of doctors who are acting absolutely against the Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. Would we be able to take a written statement from you eventually about this? Yes. Because we need to start building yes. these piles, these, these compiling these files. Oh, no. yeah. And we will make sure when this government is gone that those doctors too are held accountable. They must be held accountable. I agree. So it's a warning to all doctors, stop behaving like this to yes. any future people.